will eventually push east to areas that don't need a drop. That means another chance of flooding. You want to keep all the rain gear, the boots, the rain jacket, all of it close. But if you're like us, Jim, I always just run through it. I don't even know where my umbrella is or my rain jacket. Yeah. Well, thanks to our virtual view technology. I'm standing in St. Louis at Keener Plaza Park, where clouds will eventually move in and obscure the arch there. I've never been up in the arch. Have you guys been up in the arch before? You have? Really? Yeah, with Bettis, actually. That's cool. That's kind of random. Why were you there with <laughs> Well, that? no, we had it where you're heading. Uh, Remember yeah. that one? Yeah. I hear it's kind of cramped in there, which would make it's sense. It's a little tight. Yeah, a little tight in there. Tight. Uh, gusty winds, by the way, within some of these downpours could lead to some flash flooding through the city. Green Day and Rancid are playing the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater Thursday night. So uh, you want to be sure to keep an eye on the weather if you're headed to that show. Green Day. I love that Green Day is still around. Rancid, I remember Rancid. I don't know any Rancid songs, but I, of course, know a lot of Green Day songs. Chicago, yeah, where they wrote the songs Rancid. Chicago to Peoria to St. Louis, Springfield. This whole area is where we're going to see the storms tomorrow. So notice St. Louis is uh, in that as well. We're, since we're in the center of the country, we just kind of keep getting hit over and over again. And with our big synoptic scale system that will be moving east, it's going to tap in to not only that moisture, but we do have some low-level energy with the winds here that is going to help create some thunderstorms. And then, of course, that daytime heating is going to help build that thunderstorm development for us as this whole system is going to be moving east into tomorrow evening. Watch as those stronger winds also increase as we go a little bit higher up in the atmosphere. So those westerlies could give us a little bit of shear in the environment. And that's why we have a better chance for some of that severe weather in a bigger area as we head into tomorrow, which is Thursday, by the way. Look at that. We're already at Thursday. As we head into the afternoon hours, this is going to be stretching into Ohio, and then there you go. Look at that line that is going to be firing up here with some bigger boomers, and then that is all going to continue to progress eastbound as we head into the evening hours. So there's your flood potential. Again, it will be localized with some of those heavier downpours. Overall, one to two inches. We could see three to five here into Missouri. Quicker look here, what's going to happen into Davenport. I mean, I feel like Iowa... It gets so much weather all the time. We're talking about Iowa, Jim, whether it's the severe weather, the snow. I mean, like we get it all, it feels like. Iowa kind of seems to be like out of the 30 cert zone deaths we've had this year from rip currents, 29 out of the 30. So always talk to a lifeguard. They're super friendly. They're there to help you. Here's a look at Debbie's footprint. Month to date, we have had very heavy rainfall for us here along the East Coast. And with these disturbances coming in, these are just going to energize uh, essentially the atmosphere and give us more weather where we don't need it as we have plenty of moisture. The um, uh, drought monitor does update today, but it won't have all of Debbie's rain because it stops take intake stops taking in data on Tuesday, and so we're not fully going to have all of it. There's your rain falling on saturated grounds. Uh, we still need it here into South Carolina, even though we had the second wettest uh, tropical entity in South Carolina with Debbie, only behind Florence, but we still could use a lot of that rain. Didn't, didn't really get into western uh, South Carolina like we needed it. Friday, there's your storm coming in, and then there's that threat of flooding as we head into our Saturday and also into our Sunday morning. Here's the actual system for us, Detroit into Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Charleston, West Virginia, and it is all going to be sliding east as we go throughout the weekend. And don't forget, we have those waves. So this is kind of good. I'm hoping that all this rain and cloud cover will maybe keep people out of the water, but people that are surfing don't really care. I mean, you're getting wet, you're in the water. So, you know, but sometimes those storms can rough up the surf and make it a little tougher out there. One to two inches of rain here into New York, Pennsylvania, and down into West Virginia as well. Big man like burst through the wall or something. Or was that the Slim Jim guy? Maybe they both did. Anyhow, on uh, Friday, it's not going to be very cool across the country. Saturday stays wet here along the East Coast. And then more of that as we head into our Sunday. Dallas, Atlanta, we are hot. Welcome back into America's Morning Headquarters alongside meteorologist Jordan Steele and Jim Cantoria. Meteorologist Stephanie Abrams. Storms cranking across Colorado, making it look like a tropical storm in the Centennial State. Look at those winds howling at almost 60 miles an hour north of Denver. And Ernesto kicking up huge wind and waves. And St. Martin, the storm strengthened. And it could be a Category 3 as we head into our Friday. So we're talking about yet another major hurricane, Jim. Uh, thankfully, it'll be out to sea when it is at its strongest. Right, and it's also for, Park for your game day forecast presented by T-Mobile. We have the Rangers and the Red Sox. Fenway Park, of course, the oldest park 
Park in Major League Baseball, where the gates open 90 minutes before the game. Beautiful weather here. It is a cashless venue with more than 75 different food options. Umbrellas are allowed, but can only be used during official rain delays, but we don't have to worry about that whatsoever. And if it's your first time here seeing the Green Monster, you can learn how to make a digital first time certificate at the fan information booth. This takes you back in time when you go to Fenway. It is the coolest. You have to go. Someone talk about the MJO. That's the Maddie and Julian. Madden. Madden. <laughs> John. You. Madden. Julian. I was combining the Julian. Maddie. Right. It all went into one. Maddie and oscillation. That's yeah, why I, I was going to go with Maggie. MJO. A lot easier to say yeah, here. That's for exactly. Um, as you just saw on the maps there, that is a footprint of Debbie. And it brought a lot of rain. In fact, the second most rainfall in South Carolina, only behind Florence. But notice how the upstate, we got some rain, but not lows. We really needed it literally right here. And we'll see what the drop monitor does. We're going to have to wait. The drop monitor comes out today around 9, 10-ish. We'll have to wait till next week because it doesn't take any more data in past Tuesday. So we'll have to wait to see what happens. But... As we are past Tuesday into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we have another area of disturbed weather that is going to bring in moisture, and that means we're going to see some more showers over areas that are waterlogged. I mean, even into the northeast, we saw a huge rainfall Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the threat for storms, and also flooding here from the Great Lakes to the east coast.